Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm your host Frank Rausen Pereira. It was a great day for Asian football yesterday when Japan, despite losing to Poland 1-0, qualified for the second round of the World Cup, finishing second in their group behind Colombia. And in the other group, of course, Group G, Belgium finishing on top after they beat England 1-0 in the final group stage match. Before we round up uh, what happened yesterday, of course, let's look ahead to today's matches or other matches not, uh, you know, non-existent today. But we can, of course, look back at how the tournament progressed over the first few days of the World Cup itself and see how things went. First up, of course, we'll go over to our stats zone where my colleague Tina Ja is standing by. Welcome to the Stat Zone, I'm Tina Jha. So now that the nail-biting group matches are over, all eyes will be on the round of 16. From here on, every single match will be an eliminator. So which of the teams have finally made it to the round of 16? Let's take a look, beginning with Group A. Uruguay, as you can see, topped the group with 9 points after winning all their games in the first stage. Russia finished second with 6 points after playing 3 matches the hosts convincingly won their first two matches but lost to group toppers Uruguay in their final game. Saudi Arabia, as you can see, finished in the third place. The three points that they have came from their win against Egypt that finished at the bottom of the group after failing to secure a single point in the tournament. Moving on to Group B that had two European powerhouses, Spain and Portugal. Spain topped the group with five points after winning one game and drawing two of the other matches. Portugal too finished the first stage on five points but finished behind Spain in the group as they scored lesser goals than their Iberian rivals. After a spirited performance, Iran finished third in the group with four points ahead of Morocco that finished last. From Group B to Group C now, France topped the group with seven points with two wins and one draw. Denmark joined France in moving to the next stage, finishing second with five points. Peru came in third with just one win, while Australia finished at the bottom of the group. Let's now look at the Group D table, where Croatia topped the table with three wins and securing nine points. Argentina scraped through by the skin of their teeth after they beat Nigeria in the final game and finished with four points. Nigeria finished behind Argentina in the third place with one win and three points. Much was expected of Iceland after they drew with Argentina in their opening game, but they finished last in the group. Now moving on to the next group, which is Group E. Brazil topped this group with seven points. Switzerland joined the South Americans to move to the next round as they finished second in the group with five points. Serbia were unlucky, finishing third in the group with three points. Costa Rica came in last, managing to secure just one point in their campaign. From Group E, we'll now take a look at the standings of Group F. Sweden took the top spot in the group after beating Mexico in the last round of matches. The Swedish finished with six points. Mexico too secured two wins and six points, but they finished second due to an inferior goal difference. South Korea finished third in a tough group, which also had the number one ranked team in the world. It was a disappointing campaign for the defending champions Germany, who finished last in the group. Moving on now to Group G, where Belgium topped the group with three wins and nine points. The second spot was taken by England, who lost to Belgium in the final match and managed six points. Tunisia finished third in the group and debutants Panama came in last without securing a single point. Now to the last group, H now. After a disappointing start to the campaign, Colombia managed to top the group with two back-to-back -back wins, finishing with six points. Japan, with a win and a draw, finished second in the group to move to the next group. Senegal, too, finished with four points and a same goal difference as Japan, but failed to go through since, for the first time in World Cup history, fair play decided who went through to the next round. Poland finished last in the group with three points. Over to you, Frank. 
Thank you, Tina, for taking us through how the teams placed in each one of their groups are so moving on. Now, of course, the FIFA World Cup 2018 Round of 16 lineup has been decided. And barring Germany, almost all the teams that are expected to qualify have reached the knockout stage of the tournament. Here's a look at all the teams and how they are shaping up. 16 teams have finally made it to the knockout stages and they will fight for glory, pride and the ultimate prize, the World Cup. From Group A, Uruguay and Russia have made it to the round of 16 and they will face Portugal and Spain respectively who made it through to the round of 16 from Group B. Currently ranked 14th in the FIFA rankings, Uruguay has made 12 World Cup appearances and won two titles including the first World Cup in 1930 as hosts when they defeated Argentina 4-2 in the final and second in 1950, upsetting host Brazil 2-1. The Uruguayan team won the 2011 Copa America, winning it for the 15th time, the most for any team. From Group A, the other team to move on is Russia. Currently ranked 70th in the world, many would have expected Russia to make an early exit from the competition. But through their performance, they have proved that the side has metal. As host for this year's World Cup, they qualified for the tournament automatically. Russia has made 10 World Cup appearances and the best they achieved was 4th place in 1966. From Group B, European champions Portugal is a strong contender to lift the trophy. Ranked 4th in the FIFA rankings, they have made 6 appearances at the World Cup and their best performance was securing 3rd position in their first ever World Cup appearance back in 1966. With the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Ricardo Quaresma and Pepe, this Portuguese side has an ample amount of experience to lift the coveted title. The 2010 World Cup winner Spain is the other team to go through to the knockout stage from this group. The Spanish side has made 14 World Cup appearances. From Group C, France and Denmark are the two teams to make it to the knockout phase. Currently ranked 7th in the FIFA rankings, France has made 14 World Cup appearances and were crowned champions in the 1998 edition. While Denmark has appeared in four World Cups and their best was to reach the quarter-finals in 1998. Croatia and Argentina are the two big teams who made it to the round of 16 from Group D. Croatia booked their spot after defeating Nigeria, Argentina and Iceland. The Croatian side has made four World Cup appearances and their best was securing third place in the 1998 edition, while fifth-ranked Argentina has appeared in 16 World Cups and has won two, one in 1978 and the other in 1986. From Group E, five times world champions Brazil, which is also the second-ranked team in the world, is one of the top contenders for winning this time. Making 20 appearances in the World Cup and with players like Neymar, Gabriel Jesus, Felipe Coutinho and Marcelo, this team has a perfect balance of young talent and experience. While the other team who made it to the round of 16 from this group is Switzerland, who held the Brazilian side to a 1-1 draw and defeated Serbia in the group stage. The Swiss team has made 10 appearances and has reached the quarter-finals thrice. From Group F, which was a group of shock and surprises, two teams impressed the world, making it through to the knockouts. Mexico, who defeated defending champions Germany and paved the way for their early exit, is appearing in its 16th World Cup and has reached the quarterfinals twice, one in 1970 and the other in 1986. While the other team is Sweden, which defeated Mexico in their final group match, 3-0 to top the group. Sweden has made 11 World Cup appearances and they were the runners-up in 1958. Winning all their group matches, Belgium is in a strong position with the likes of Romelu Lukaku and Eden Hazard. This Belgian side is a strong contender to lift the title from Group G. Currently ranked third, Belgium has appeared in 12 World Cups and secured the fourth position in 1986. While the other team to make it to the last 16 from the group is England, which is competing in its sixth consecutive World Cup. The team has made 14 World Cup appearances and were the world champions in 1966. From Group H, Colombia and Japan are the two teams that made it to the knockouts. 
The only Asian team still left in the competition, Japan made it to the knockout stages after becoming the first team to qualify for the knockout rounds on fair play points. Japan has made five appearances in the World Cup and have reached a round of 16 twice before, one in 2002 and the other in 2010, making this the third time. While Colombia has made the same number of World Cup appearances, five as Japan, and they reached the quarter-finals in the 2014 edition. Kumar Abhishek's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now take a look at uh, which are the teams that have moved on to the next stage of the World Cup. France versus Argentina, of course, will be one of the games. Uh, Uruguay versus Portugal, Spain versus Russia, Croatia versus Denmark as well. These, of course, are eight of the 16 teams that have made it to the next round. We'll take a look at the other eight teams as well who have made it to the second round of the World Cup. We have Brazil versus Mexico, uh, Belgium versus Japan, Sweden versus Switzerland, and Colombia versus England. Those are the teams that make up the 16 teams that have moved on to the next round of the FIFA World Cup, halving uh, the 32 into 16 now. Uh, joining me in our studios now is Nilantan Datta, senior sports journalist, and with us is uh, Jyoti Ann Bharat, former Indian national player. Nilantan, let me begin with you today. Of course, as far as the entire tournament is concerned, 16 teams have now progressed to the next stage. Some exciting uh, times ahead. All the matches will be eliminators going forward. The tournament uh, World Cup begins from here. Because once into the group stage, it's always plays in the mind to just get out of the group stage. Once you are into the knockout, there's no chance of any draw. The strategies change. People may not be willing to open up. There's the extra time and also the tiebreakers. And won't be coming much of a surprise if some teams originally planned for the tiebreaker. So this is the total drama of the World Cup, which makes it exciting. At the end of the day, you will have a winner, you will have a loser. We didn't have many draws in this tournament, but that's the magical part of the World Cup. Round of 16 quarters, semis and the grand finale. Indeed. You know, uh, the first match, of course, is uh, Argentina versus France. Uh, what can we expect from that, uh, Jyoti? I mean, do you expect France to sail through, looking at what you've seen in the first uh, stage of the World Cup? Or do you believe that Argentina can give the French a run for their money? I think, see, firstly, it's going to be a cracker of, the ga of a game because I think the first game itself is so eagerly awaited by everybody. Um, we're all waiting to see uh, the real Argentina and because we know what they're capable of. The French have sort of shown us glimpses of them and how they work well in patches, but still I feel they haven't been really tested. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they go up against each other and under par Argentina with Current France, I would see France win. But if Argentina can can notch it up, I think Argentina would beat them. And of course, the others who have made it through, Uruguay versus Portugal, we, we can certainly expect some fireworks there. You know, Ronaldo versus Luis Suarez. Cavani. Cavani too, Super yes. Saturday, in fact. Uh, tomorrow, <laughs> two matches. We can't really wait for it. Portugal's biggest uh, quality has been that they have been winning matches. You do not need to play beautiful football to win modern day football. Even in the Euro, they may not have been the best team. Some glimpses of brilliance from Karesma, Cristiano Ronaldo saw them through. And they beat teams while there. Even in this tournament, they have not been that impressive, but they have been How far matches. will Cristiano Ronaldo see his team through? I, 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 I like him very much. Let him win the <laughs> tournament, no problem. But again, football is not a one-man game. Indeed. It's, it's, it's a game where others have to rally around him and put him, but, uh, put him in the play. But Uruguay is... Means you cannot take them lightly. There's quite a bit of quality in this Uruguayan side. And if you look at this side of the draw, Jyoti, the other match, of course, is between Brazil and Mexico. Uh, similar style of play between Mexico and Brazil, but uh, the Brazilian look like a good uh, side now that they have completed these three matches. Yeah, they look much better. I love how Coutinho and uh, Neymar are working up. They're working well together. Suddenly, you know, they're looking. They're looking strong. They have this partnership going on the field, which is working for them. And of course, Coutinho has been on target. So he's been someone who's been scoring for them nearly every game. Uh, up against the Mexico side, that didn't look so great yesterday, you know. So they're going into this game at the back of a defeat. I don't know. I would expect Brazil to come out on top. Uh, and I would think Coutinho is going to be their big man, not Neymar. 
All right, Coutinho is going to be their big man. Coutinho is the one to watch out for, is what Jyoti is saying as far as the Brazilian side is concerned. The last match in this side of the draw is, of course, between Belgium and Japan. Uh, the Japanese will have their task cut out for them against the Belgians. Acid test for Japan. I mean, so I believe the main target for Japan was to get out of the group stage, which they have achieved. May not in the fashion where ev which everyone may have liked them to, but uh, their target has been achieved. The quality in this Belgian side, they are one of the probable finalists, semi-finalists for sure, seems on paper, if not the finalist. Uh, it, should, it should be totally a one-sided thing and the quality of Japan has been mainly to contend. So the fox in the box, they were not there. And it's, uh, it should be a kind of a, if not a cakewalk, a kind of easy thing for Belgium. At least it seems on paper. But we have had surprises. And if they come in, no problems. It's still early days. It's but early can, we, days. can we start talking about the quarterfinals already? Looking at this side of the draw, <laughs> I mean, who... Not who... really, I won't. Because <laughs> I put up my hand the other day saying Germany will be beating South, <laughs> South Korea. No, no way. Okay, any guesses, Jyoti? As far as to who might reach the quarterfinals from this side of the draw, maybe even the semifinals? I think there'll be one upset. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping there will be one upset at least, just to change things up. Alright, let's look at the other side of the draw now. Of course, Spain versus Russia is one of the matches. Uh, the tiki-taka style of the Spanish will be up against the rejuvenated, if you can call them that, Russians at home. What's likely to happen there, Nilanja? The quality hit Russia in the other match. Uh, from the organizer's point of view, it's always good to... Were they also a bit complacent, would you think, against uh, uh, the Uruguay? I don't feel so. I okay. don't feel so. Uh, from the organizer's point of view, it's always good. There's long, the longer the uh, host stay in the tournament, the interest of the tournament mm. always stays alive. But the quality which hit them against Uruguay, it may be a shade more quality would be hitting them against Spain. Not that Spain can't be beaten, but on paper, the Spanish side should be having it easy against Russia, despite all of that home support. And if you look at the next match, of course, it's Croatia versus Denmark. Uh, Croatia versus Denmark. Croatians uh, have proven that they are a formidable side thus far in the tournament. But have they peaked too early, Jyoti? Could that I, be a problem? I don't think they peaked too early. I think this is a quality side. They've got uh, great players who are working really well together. They haven't lost yet. They're on a high. And they're going up against a side that um, I think they should take quite easily. And Croatia is my dark horse, you know, in this competition and I feel they're going to go far. The other match, of course, is between Sweden and Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> would you want to call this match, Lanja? Oh, very, very difficult. I pointed out to a tiebreaker in this uh, round of 16, maybe this match. Slight edge for the Swiss uh, team. Uh, this will be very, very interesting and a tactical tie. It's hard to pick up a winner. Can go to extra time, can go into the tiebreakers, maybe Switzerland. You know, that's another thing to be excited about uh, in this phase of the tournament, isn't it? From now on, there could be extra time, penalties, Absolutely. exciting times ahead really as far as spectators are concerned. Jyoti, the other match of course is between Colombia and England. What can we expect there? I think the English are currently looking quite happy to be facing Colombia in the next round. They feel they have it easier this side of the group. But it may catch up with them if Colombia actually surprise them. Because Colombia are a surprisingly tough side. Um, we've seen that. And um, they're working really well together again in England. You know, I don't know if this, this loss yesterday to Benjamin is going to uh, mess with their momentum right now. And at this stage of the competition. Sure. And Those if, are as if, far if, as the if, matches if, are concerned. If I may yeah. add, if the reports are to be believed, the English can welcome the loss. Hmm. So, in a sense, you are disrespecting your next opposition. Right. If that doesn't motivate the opposition, what else will? Indeed. They are not guaranteed of a quarter-final slot yet. They are making calculations. Yeah, the Colombians in can, World can Cup, prove to be very tricky not. opponents and they could have the Englishman's number this going into this match. This is the reports are believed to be true. Sure, sure. All right. Uh, that's it as far as the... A round of 16 is concerned. These are the teams will be up against each other and we'll be looking forward to those matches as well. And we'll keep bringing you all the details and detailed analysis as far as those games are concerned as well. But for now, we'll slip into a short break. There were matches that were played yesterday. Let's not forget, we'll round them up on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.